Hello everyone, welcome to our presentation. Um, so now we're here to have a talk titled Teaching 21st Century Skills Through LGBTQ Plus Inclusive Pedagogies. Um, so first I'd like to introduce our presenters, including of course, and then highlight one important point about our presentation. So I'm Adnan Yilmaz from Sinop University in Turkey, and this is my colleague Binidor Tatepe from Middlebury Institute of International Studies at Monterey. Um, we have one more presenter, um, Gökçe Çiçek. She's, um, Çiçek Cepher. She's not here, but on her way um, to Pittsburgh, and she will attend TISOL, hopefully. Um, the other point that I would like to highlight about our, about our presentation is that this presentation um, is based on a social justice project funded by the US Embassy in Ankara, Turkey, and also the Department of State. Um, so here is an overall flow for our talk. So first, um, we will begin with a larger picture that is, um, we're going to talk about, give you some information about the large scale project that we carried out within since um, 2019, 2018. And then in particular, we'll focus on LGBTQ plus um, issues in Turkey. Um, with this particular focus, we will have a look at um, a small scale social um, responsibility project which gave, which kind of laid the groundwork for this particular presentation. And then hopefully we will have some recommendations and in the talk. Um, so our large-scale social justice um, in ALT um, project aimed to develop, um, it had three basic aims, including developing pre-service English language teachers' capacity to integrate social justice issues in their classrooms, um, enabling them to think critically about their classrooms or schools, as well as the world around them, and also helping um, reduce social injustice and increasing equality in socioeconomically disadvantaged areas in Turkey. So these are the basic objectives or of our large-scale project. Um, our project included five different stages. So we started with an introductory um, seminars across different universities in Turkey. Um, so in this webinar, in this introductory seminar, we recruited our participants and then moved on to our webinars. So we delivered four different webinars to our preservers teachers from different universities in Turkey. Um, so each with a different focus. Um, here I'd like to highlight or draw your attention to the third one, which is the LGBTQ plus inclusive pedagogy. So after each um, webinar, our students designed lesson plans and also wrote reflective blog posts and shared them on our website, which you will see in a minute. Um, and then we, after the webinars, we moved on to a, a workshop where we had, we had a chance to talk to our pre-service teachers on carrying out um, small-scale social responsibility projects. So within our project, they were expected to carry out their own social justice projects. Um, so after the workshop, they carried out their um, social responsibility projects, and we had uh, our first um, symposium in 2019, and we're going to hopefully have the next one in, 20, uh, in October 2022. So let's now focus on LGBTQ plus issues in Turkey. So here you see some statistical data in relation to the acceptance of homosexuality plus the LGBTQ rights in Turkey, but we see that Turkey is far behind the countries in Europe and also the United States in relation to the acceptance of homosexuality. So here you see more data in relation to LGBTQ plus issues in Turkey. So let me just give you an example. So for example, if you're an LGBTQ plus a member or a person and would like to get employed in Turkey, that's quite complicated for you to be employed because of your identity. So most probably, if you are one who's a homosexual person, you will not be employed, unfortunately. Um, so here is a picture from um, the garden. So it's, a, it's, it's the murder of a transgender woman in Turkey. Um, so in studies on LGBTQ plus inclusive pedagogies, we see that um, K-12 students and also the tertiary level students um, go through a lot of discrimination and bullying because of their sexual orientation or gender identity. Um, similarly, well, if you're an LGBTQ member or a homosexual person, unfortunately, you have limitations in terms of access to healthcare. So you might not even be um, addressed by using um, through your first name or the name that you have chosen. So how about the textbooks that represent, that are used in Turkey in the education context. So here we see oftentimes the heterosexual families and represented, you know, the women and the men in textbooks. Any textbook that would include homosexual families are not allowed in the context of 
of education. Um, so, yeah, Ben. All right. Um, so, social justice in LQ project. Um, so, actually, what you will see here is an embedded case study, study which means we had our large scale project. Within our large scale project, our participants carried out their small scale social justice um, projects. So, here you see um, the one that is carried out by one of our pre-service teachers called Gokche. So Gokche had this introductory seminar, uh, we had the uh, introductory seminar and then the webinar, and then again the, uh, the, um, the LGBTQ plus issues, and then the workshop, and again Gokche's uh, social justice project, a social responsibility project, and the symposium. So um, I'd like to draw your attention especially to the webinar on LGBTQ plus inclusive pedagogy. So this particular webinar aimed to help um, for service teachers to fight heteronormativity and also assist normativity through classroom materials plus um, instructional strategies. So in our webinar, we try to cover the issues that you see here, some basic definitions and key terms in relation to LGBTQ plus in people, and also heteronormative discourse, especially in textbooks. So we try to do some analysis, textbook analysis in relation to LGBTQ plus issues. Um, and then we also had a look at uh, the LGBTQ movements in Turkey and also in the world, like the LGBTQ plus um, allies at different universities in Turkey. And we saw that, well, we don't have um, so many um, allies. Plus, um, um, in relation to LGBTQ plus pedagogy, we had a, we focused on textbooks, classroom interactions, and the curriculum. And we see we saw that there's a huge gap in that sense in Turkey. All right, I'm going to leave the floor to Denise. Thanks, Alvin. Of course. Hi, everyone. Um, so I'll talk about the data collection uh, within this larger um, um, project. So we, in relation to the LGBTQ issues, we did a pre-webinar and post-webinar perception survey. Um, and, and we also looked at the students' online discussions during the, the breakout sessions. Uh, we also analyzed the mini research projects that were shared on the, the blog post. And then we also analyzed the lesson plans related to this particular theme, uh, developed with social justice objectives uh, focusing on LGBTQ plus um, issues. And we actually presented this study last year in AAAL. So I'm not going to focus on too much on this larger picture, but we really want to give you a sense of what Gökçe has done as one of our participants within her own social responsibility project. Again, she, uh, you know, so we have a couple of recordings um, to, to reflect that, but to just to give you an overview of the, the major findings of what we found within the larger project is that it, um, the, the findings reveal that the uh, focusing on LGBTQ inclusive pedagogy informed peer service teachers about LGBTQ -relate, class related issues, concepts, and ways to use it in a way that shows uh, respect. It also enabled them to translate this knowledge into instructional strategies uh, for LGBTQ plus inclusive pedagogies. It enabled them to check their backgrounds, beliefs, and biases um, to help them respond to anti-LGBTQ plus behaviors and become visible LGBTQ plus allies. And it also enabled them to revisit their school and classroom policies and educate others regarding sexual and gender um, diversity and about gender democratization in a way that would lead to social um, change. So this is Gökçe and she recorded a uh, a you know, mini video for us um, introducing um, herself and giving a brief uh, snapshot, of, snapshot of what she um, has done. Good afternoon and thank you for this opportunity. I hope you are all doing well. I greet you from Toronto. Uh, my name is Gökçe Çiçek Cevher. I am an English language teacher in a private course in Toronto. During the project, I was studying in English language teaching department in Toronto University. I wanted to join the Social Justice in the project because I believe language teachers are not just supposed to teach the language, but also they are responsible for students' points of view towards the world. Uh, 
Uh, I wanted to focus on LGBTQ plus community because the community needs a voice in the classrooms. Also, they need to see themselves reflected in what they learn. Uh, I divided my objectives into three topics. Uh, social justice goals, language learning and teaching goals, and also 21st century learning outcomes that are critical thinking, creativity, collaboration and communication. I worked with eight participants, they were volunteers, they were studying in English language teaching department in Snob University. In the process, I had four meetings, the meetings lasted four weeks, before the meetings, I conducted a survey about how the students felt about LGBTQ plus community. Uh, while, conducted, while conducting the meetings, I asked the students to keep journals about what they learned and how they felt. After the meetings, the students recorded testimonies about how they felt during the whole process. And also, uh, after the meetings, I conducted the same survey with the first one to see the difference between students' thoughts. Thank you for your attention. Take care. So this is Gökçe, and, um, that, and you know a brief uh, summary of uh, you know why she wanted to participate in our project and what she has done as part of her own social responsibility project. Uh, we have another video and this time we're going to show you what actually happened during these webinars that um, Gökçe carried out with her own participants. <laughs> as you see here, trans woman, masculine, feminine, gay, transsexual. We are going to focus on them and at the end, I am going to ask you to uh, categorize all those uh, terms uh, under these main titles. about uh, uh, the family's emotional ways, uh, emotional parts. Um, it is not different from our families. It is like a usual family. They uh, care for their children, they love their children, support their children. And it is not different from a usual family. And we had also not a different, we couldn't find a difference between with our family except from having two fathers of course using these kinds of subjects in uh, our lessons can also uh, raise awareness uh, for the future uh, for the future children there are a lot of penguins the girl ones and the boys start notice each other but two penguins are different in the families they are Siva and Roy become a couple they slept and woke up together they want a, a baby but they couldn't do anything. So keeper noticed it. He got and thinking. He took an egg. He put it in the nest. Then Tango makes three. They become happy. As I said, I would be disappointed. It's disgusting that people think uh, every anyone who is female or male must wear the way um, around the society what think what the society think. Yeah. What if people tell you why your voice is like that? This is just my voice. Anything can happen. It's not a thing. I would say that it's none of, none of the business. I know that people will judge me. to mention mm -hmm. um, we, yes. we call uh, LGBTQ community as uh, very rude and inappropriate words to call them okay now we have yeah. our own policies what 
name bullying, name calling, and uh, verbal bullying. We just say we have people's religion, um, appearance, and race, and work inside intelligence, sexual preferences, and status. These are our limits. So this is the petition written to me. Um, I serve as the head of the department, so they wrote this to me um, regarding the LGBTQ plus issues. Uh, so in terms of uh, data collection and analysis uh, for this uh, particular um, social responsibility project, uh, data were collected through, again, pre and post social responsibility project um, survey and through webinar discussions and through student journals and testimonies. And, and we will, in this uh, presentation, we will only focus on the qualitative data, uh, which were analyzed um, thematically and we're still you know, going through the, the survey um, results. So the qualitative findings um, revealed four major themes that we thought uh, were um, you know, heading towards challenging heteronormativity in Turkey. Uh, so the first one was um, acquiring the LGBTQ uh, plus related vocabulary in terms of gaining, but also raising awareness um, because these were pre-surfaced uh, English language teachers. Um, the second theme was about the conceptualizing the conventional understanding of family. Uh, the third one is about developing empathy and um, advocacy, and the third one is about being a good LGBTQ plus um, ally. Um, so I'm going to talk about each one of these uh, in the next uh, few slides. So uh, I'll give you a minute to actually, not a minute, we don't have that much time, um, maybe 15 seconds um, to, um, to read these two um, quotations. So as you can see in these two quotations, the students gained an understanding of the LGBTQ plus related vocabulary, uh, and and you know it was and also like you know they understood LGBTQ uh, plus related issues from a, a historical perspective rather than you know something that's happening only only now. Uh, and also, what was great for us um, to see in relation to the theme this was that if learning this vocabulary and understanding the, the, the challenges um, also help them um, to search for further information. They were like, you know, this, this knowledge makes me, you know, move from here and, and to help avoid um, misconceptions. And we'll see actually more of that in the, the next uh, couple of slides. So the second theme was about reconceptualizing the conventional understanding of family. And, and, you know, I don't know if you um, caught that in the, the, the video that we showed, uh, Gökçe used um, Antango Makes Three, this beautiful um, children's book um, about two gay um, penguins and, you know, um, in, which was a true story uh, from the Central Park uh, in New York City. Um, so, you know, discussions around um, this book helped them un like see, unpack this conventional understanding of family. And it's, you know, I'll give you another like 30 seconds to, um, to read the quotations and I'll talk about them.
So as Anna mentioned earlier, pretty much everything in Turkey, the, the media, social media, education, um, other institutions, uh, in other domains, everything is pretty much heteronormative. And, and students see like, you know, families with one mother and one father as this like, you know, typical, usual, normal uh, family. And this book actually helped them explore, okay, like, you know, families with two fathers or two mothers, you know, they still form, it's still a family. And, and being gay is as normal as being straight. And from a queer um, theory perspective, I, I guess this is still problematic that, you know, yeah, being gay is still normal and I think we should push them a bit more towards challenging what's normal and what's not normal. But even this much progress, like understanding that, yeah, we understand what's normal and abnormal because we are taught to see them as so. And this aspect of socialization into heteronormativity for us was really, um, um, really great to see. And the third one uh, was about, um, the third theme was about developing empathy and advocacy, and I'll give you another um, 30 seconds to read this. Again, what you see here is that, like you know, how they develop empathy, and and uh, how they understood the the, 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 the the lives and identities of uh, LGBTQ plus um, communities, and you know, and said bravery and motivation, uh, and how they wouldn't even you know um, come out. So like you know, understanding the, the coming out process was uh, also part of um, this, you know. Um, empathy building and advocacy uh, building. And this was uh, for us really um, powerful because um, the students said our words and thoughts will affect many people in the future because they are related to society and social life. So uh, we felt like, yeah, like our project and Gökçe's social responsibility project really made an impact on their lives to understand how social justice was actually part of language education. And the, the last uh, theme was about being an LGBTQ plus ally as language teachers and another 30 seconds for you to read. So coming back to this theme, I actually put um, the image pyramid here because, you know, we actually put the, the, the image here uh, because we we felt like the the four themes that we have seen in the data sort of build up this you know pyramid, like you know starting with the vocabulary, establishing the conceptual uh, language and and then slowly building up with you know empathy and advocacy and coming to this stage finally the students are aware that they are accountable they are responsible they are responsible for the the, the, the well-being of their um students uh from you know all gender and sexual uh background so this was um kind of like the the, the tip of the uh, the top of the, the pyramid. So we'd like to uh, sh end with a student testimony. And of course, this is shared uh, uh, with her um, permission. The project was highly beneficial in terms of getting to know about LGBTQ community, 
Not only did I learn the right terms to address them, but also got a chance to empathize myself with them so that I could at least try to understand the struggles they face. So one day when I become a teacher, I want to share the same information with my students and raise awareness and also create a kind, respectful and safe environment for the students who belong to the same community in my own classroom. I think we would like to suggest and with her words, um, I think it sums um, the, the project really well. Um, thank you for uh, listening and uh, apologies, uh, we are over time. <laughs> we have actually additional slides, but that could, we should cut here. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.